Here's someone you may relate to. Have a listen to this. He's a worship leader. He was a church keyboard player and choir master and a hard worker. Part of his job was writing music all year round for services and he had the highest of standards. He was a musical genius but small-minded people incapable of recognising his genius were simply intimidated by it. These people plagued him all his life. I'm sure some of you can relate to that. As a young player, he was chastised in the local church for playing unusual and radical variations of music during the services, woe unto him. Certain leaders tried to make his life a misery. He said, they have a small understanding of music. I live under almost constant vexation, jealousy and persecution and financial income and fees that were due my position have been stopped. He also found <laughs> his authority continually challenged by his rector, that is, a kind of pastor. This music director would not play church politics. He put the music first and the talent of those he tutored and mentored. He was a fruitful, busy man as well. He was married twice and he bore 20 children. As he got older, he was considered a little old-fashioned. Isn't it amazing what happens over time? And he became old-fashioned even with his church music, which really required him to change. For a more flamboyant and sentimental expression with the moving of the times. How sometimes we just never change, even when the times are moving on. However, he was a very prolific songwriter and composer. Do you know who he is? Have you guessed who it is yet? Who that worship leader? No, it was not Noel Richards. No, it wasn't Graham Kendrick. And it wasn't Ron Canoli. In fact, it was Johann Sebastian Bach from Leipzig in Germany in the 17th century. <laughs> so there's nothing new under the sun.